Again, uh, today I'm talking about the Hydrosynth, which you've seen me do a couple of videos before, possibly. Uh, I got this quite early on for uh, someone in England, I got it in January, so I've had it about a month now. And so I'm going to show you what I like about it, what I don't, a couple of tips. I've tagged this as a review, but actually it's going to show you what I like and stuff. There's... I'm not going to show you every single function on here, you know synths. I don't need to tell you, it's got LFOs and effects and stuff, you know, it's got a ring modulator, yeah, you know all that stuff. And you've, you've seen the reviews, there's millions of them, because it's quite a new synth, so and quite exciting. So the first thing that attracted me to the Hydro synth when I first um, heard about it was the Polyphonic Aftertouch. I was very excited by this. Uh, I've blogged a bit about Poly Aftertouch and why I would like it. I've been looking for keyboards that did polyphonic aftertouch. Uh, there only seems to be one around, which is really expensive. I've tried doing it with the devices with mixed success, but it's now here on this keyboard. And it's a nice keyboard and it does polyphonic aftertouch. And it's, just, it's everything I wanted it to be. So. So all that lovely expressive thing that you previously really had to have um, a Roly C board or a Continuum or one of these really expressive keyboards. Nowadays you do it on this one synth you can carry around with you. Absolutely fantastic. I love it to bits. So I would have bought this synth just for that, unless the synth engine had been rubbish, which it isn't. Because I really wanted a polyphonic aftertouch synth. I suppose the other reason a polyphonic aftertouch keyboard would be less use is that there aren't many synths that do it. I've got the blowfelt, but that's limited in its quality of sound, I think, and the amount of polyphony you can often get out of it with some of the fancy patches. Hydrosynth is 8 voice polyphonic, which is fine for a synth with that length of keyboard, I think. And you can get quite a lot out of it. Other things that attracted me of the Hydrosynth, it's got a lot of mod slots. If you look on here, the 32 destinations. And lots of things you can modulate. It's got expression pedals, CCs. Talk about my in middle. It's got the ribbon controller. It's got loads of enve envelopes and LFOs here. And they're all more modulatable. Brilliant. The other thing I like is the mutators. You can do all sorts of fancy things with these. I'll talk about them in more detail in a minute. So you've got four of those, which I think is very powerful. And again, they're part of the mod matrix. So you can do all sorts of things with that. The other thing I love about the Hydrosynth, it's, it's a modern, new style design. It's not just another analogue synth. So many analog synths around now. Yeah, they're nice. I've got several myself and they're lovely, but you only need so many of them. You know, there's so much you can do in the digital domain that you can't do in the analog domain either at all or without spending an absolute mint on modules. And I'm not a big fan of modular synths, as you may have gathered if you see me on Twitter. So, yeah, 
it's, it's, it's a new sort of design in a way. There's lots of new ideas in here, or at least combinations of existing designs that have not been done before to this level, I think. So that, I think, is really nice. Uh, so that patch I did you at the beginning is a drone patch that I put together myself. If you saw me, uh, I did a video on YouTube of me playing violin to it. And it's very good at those sort of very expressive, very evolving drones. It's really nice at those. But at its heart, it is a, you know, a virtual analog style synth. So it also does the sort of virtual analog things. So it's actually quite a powerful thing. So you. Just a lead from a CSMA track that we have. So you can do those big lead stuff. So my plan is, if when we do so, we get back gigging again with CSMA, I might take this instead of the Nord, which is what I used to do that on, because it'll do more than the Nord. It'll do most of the stuff the Nord will. It doesn't sound like a Nord, of course it doesn't, that's why it's a Nord. But this will do, for the sake of a live gig, a lot of the stuff that I need. And then it'll do all the virtual analog stuff, and then it'll do the weirdo drones, and the silly, and the squidgy effects, and all this sort of stuff. So, yeah. Very, very flexible thing, because you've got the filters now. <laughs> sound. So let's show you some of the fancy features of this that I do particularly like. So I've got some examples here. You've got these buttons here that show you what to do, what the things are. So if I pick oscillator, oscillator 1, you've got wave scan and you've got different waves here. Now these are all presets, there's no way at the current firmware at least to load your own wavetables in there which I hope will be built up in the future because I think that will be really useful. The big powerful thing you do is so you set up a wave scan and you edit the wavetables. And then you modulate those with the LFO. Now this is where the shift key comes in handy. The shift key does all sorts of fancy things. If you just try it, just just push the shift key and move something, it'll do something slightly different. A lot of the time it just snaps the good values, it'll snap the uh, modulations to whole number values and that sort of thing. When you're working with these, it will move all of them at the same time, which is really nice. So if you want to say have the uh, clangor wave table and all of those you can move them all in lockstep because often there are not always you can see there are only a few there but sometimes you get eight waves that are all related so if I go down to horizon which is one of the ones I like See, it just puts them all in there automatically. And that's modulating through all of those in sequence. Now you can change them individually. You can put odd ones in the middle just to make it different. And it will smoothly morph between those as it goes past them. So that's one of the mod matrix LFO5 modulating the wave scale. Another five there. Lovely and smooth. 
and that for me is the heart of the evolving drones. I like the sample and hold on this because what you can do is put the smooth on and you get lovely evolving things that are not entirely predictable like a square wave or a saw wave. So the LFO is really powerful for that. They go quite, they go quite slow, 0.02 hertz, right up to mobile. They don't quite go into sort of really high speed, which would be nice to do FM. I'm not too worried about that because the mutators will do the FM if that's what you need. So you get that sort of babbling. They'll only go up to 150 hertz. You can BPM sync them, start with the phase, all this sort of usual stuff for the LFOs. I'm not going to go through the LFOs. You know how the LFOs work. So you've got five LFOs. By default, LFO 1 are assigned to the filter. So envelopes, you've got five of those. By default, envelope 2 is the amp and envelope 1 is the filter. That's actually quite common, but for some reason I think always think it should be the other way around. I think that the amp should be envelope 1, but it's that's how it is and that's how it is another thing. So. Yeah, I need to get used to it. When the envelopes get really powerful and they almost become extra LFOs, if you like, is when you start doing envelope looping. So here I've got an envelope that loops. Just five times. So if you wanted to play chopsticks on it, you could do that with uh, without even pushing the keys too hard. <laughs> do that if that's what you really want to do. There's some tricks to using the envelopes which I'm going to show you because they're not... I suppose they're intuitive if you think about it very carefully, but they caught me out. So the way the envelopes for repeating. Obviously you need envelope loop on, I've got five in there if you many as you like. Or loop it in to infinity, loop forever. Looping forever obviously makes it into a bit like an LFO, which is nice. So you need to have the sustain all the way off for it to loop sensibly. Well that's it'll just sustain forever. And then the distance between your attack and your decay determines how long your loop sound lasts. Then of course you can do. This work becomes quite LFO like. But you can add a delay in there, so you need to re-trigger the key to get the new LFO. So the delay can be quite long, so you can have things that press a note and then things will happen to that note like 32 seconds later if that's what you really want to do. It's quite fun. And of course you've got all the curves here again. Latch that. The latch button is very helpful for trying these sorts of things. So how I've got that set up is in the mod matrix. I've got envelope five, mixer, oscillator one, volume. 
In the mixer, of course, you just turn the oscillator one off, otherwise it'll sound all at normal all the time. Or you can have it partly on, and the envelope will just make it louder, so you've got a bass line that's always there. But that's quite useful, you can do all sorts of handy things with that. Where it comes in useful is playing with the mutators, which I'll now show you. So the mutators are really nice, so you've got two of these for the first two oscillators. Oscillator 3 doesn't have one, so that's where you do sort of normal VA stuff or whatever. And they've got various things that they will do. So the first one is an FM, which is why I said you don't really need FM on the uh, LFOs, because it will do it here. Because your FM source can be Another oscillator, say so oscillator 3. Or one of the other mutants. And you've got the sine and triangle waves as well, so you can do those. Again, with the shift key comes in handy because Jeff M generally the whole numbers are more musically useful rather than doing the song. Trying to find something in with the noise. Now all these are modulatable in the modmatic, so modulating the depth is usually the most useful thing to do, I found. You set up a nice sound, you just modulate it in and out, but you can modulate the other stuff as well, it's very powerful. So the other one's a wave stack, which is basically just stacks up waves, if you want that sort of super source sound. Oscillator sync. This is one of the nice things, you can sync the oscillators to different ratios, and again, the shift key here is your friend. Lovely stuff. Now we've got two pulse width modulators here. Three pulse width modulators here. <laughs> Which are fairly complex, so it's worth looking up in the manual to see how those work. With the PWASM, you can actually build your own waves. Modulator. I don't know, the shift key doesn't do anything there. I would hope this would the shift key would work like the wave editor and sync, line them all up, but it doesn't. So it's worth exploring with those. They're, you think, oh, pulse it's modulation, yeah, it's the Nick Bat thing, we all know how that works. But is that they're actually they're more powerful than you think. There is there's a reason there's three of them, they do quite mad things, particularly this custom edit. If you set these up quite carefully which I haven't yet done. <laughs> you can do quite some clever things with them. So it's worth exploring those. My favourite is the harmonic one. Which you can bring in harmonics. See how I'm modulating there on an envelope.
but then you could put that on an LFO. So yeah, mutations are good. And then you've got two of these, after each. they're running in series, as you can see there. If you want to run in parallel, you'll have similar oscillators. So if you want to FM modulate your pulse width modulation, yeah, fill your boots. <laughs> so you can get some very, very fancy sounds out of it. It's really nice. So you've got the wave stack going into the FM. That's been my, I don't think it's using the FM actually. So the mix there has a pan, as well as how they are. Another thing I like about this is a ribbon controller. Now, be it by default, the ribbon controller is what you think is a pitch bend ribbon controller, but you can make it do all sorts of things uh, by default, pitch bend. My one complaint with the uh, rim control is you need to push it on slightly harder. Sometimes I get a bit gentle on it and let it go back to where it was, but you can do that. Well, you can read. Yeah, the other option for to play theremin, right? So that the theremin plays regardless of what you're doing here, so you hold down there. It's no easier to pitch than a real theremin, which I can't play, so that was sounding terrible. <laughs> but, yeah. But I love it for doing modulations, so if you set Ribbon to mod only. Then it becomes a destination in the mod matrix. There, ribbon absolute. Quick look at the mod matrix. It's really powerful. So you push a button there. What you can do is you want to assign an LFO, just press the LFO button, go down, we'll assign that LFO to the mixer. Brings up some defaults, or you can change them if you like, and change the amount. So it's quite nice that you can just push a button, so you don't have to do all this, um, a lot of the scrolling. Sometimes you do, I mean if you want to do an LFO, by default you get a unidirectional LFO, if you just want a monodirectional LFO, you need to do that. One thing I would have liked on the mod matrix is to be able to flip the mod wheel and bring that up as a destination here, which you can't do. The montage does that. All right, the montage has cost three times the price. But um, yeah, I think that would be a lovely thing to do because I don't have any after touch in there as a destination. Just hold down the after touch and bring it as a destination in there. That would be nice. Ribbon controller. To be honest, you get the ribbon controller by pressing the button. But it'd be nice to be able to do that and design the ribbon controller because I'm lazy and it's all the way over there. Look, I mean, God has. But yeah, you've got all these slots in here. And once you've got. And you can modify the mod. These are mods in. 
you've got um, MIDI CCs which you can send externally. It'll do mono after search, which is often quite handy for that um, TPE patch I showed you. That's using mono after touch because I'm basically emulating another synth. I mean, the knob doesn't have after touch at all, which is one of the reasons I'm moving it to this. But it was originally done on a blow felt, which did use after touch. So if you want to do mono after touch and mono after touch, and you can have both, you can have mono after touch modulating one thing and poly after touch modulating something else, which is really nice. Velocity on, pitch wheel, mod wheel. Movement can be relative or absolute. Some expression pedal and MPE. MPE, oh yes, with the new 1.3 firmware, it supports MPE, which means you can plug your early C board not quite straight into it because it doesn't have a USB the right way around on the back, but via a computer or my little Raspberry Pi, all you do system setup. MPE. It on. Several things get turned on and off, but then you just plug your really C board in there and it just works. You don't need to put, define anything particular. All your destinations just work fine. So if your patch does poly after search or even one of after touch, it does CC72, is it? I forget which. That does the mod wheel. It's, it's, yeah, it just works. It's so nice. Just hardly needs any programming at all to make this work beautifully with MPE. So that's a really lovely feature. So the filters you can have in parallel or serial. And if they're in parallel you can define which oscillators go through which filters. So there, 24, 24 dB. Of course, all this modulatable from the mod matrix and you've also got some hardwired things here which is also very helpful. Even changed the way the vowel order is modulated. <laughs> so yeah, the drive's good. And you can either have it before the filter or after the filter. So filter two is a variable state filter. on the LFO, got all the mod matrix again of course. It's got all the usual synths there, it's got an arpeggiator there which I'm not even going to talk about because you know arpeggiators work. It's nothing particularly special as arpeggiators go. The ratchet facility is nice but it's always indeterministic, so it's always on a chance. I would like a bit more deterministic ratchet. But... So... So... so I'd like to be able to put the uh, the ratchet in particular places on the arpeggiator. So yeah, it's it's decent arpeggiator and it has its uses. But it's, it's nothing special. Yeah, it's fine. It, it does the job. So general things I like. I like these knobs. It feels very solid. Turn that off. 
black, the, the uh, continuous encoders here, they feel very solid, they keep the values obviously because they're encoders, things that are normal knobs are normal knobs, the buttons they all feel very solid, they all feel very solid. The keyboard is lovely, particularly the poly after touch, it just feels very solid, it's quite heavy, I mean that's one of the problems with gigging, it just goes quite heavy. So the sound is nice, it does a lot of interesting things. But it also does, does the bread and butter stuff as well, which I wasn't really expecting. I don't know why, it seems a bit strange. But I sort of expected it to be great at all sort of lovely evolving grounds and wild patches and sort of gloopy sounds and sounds. But it's actually quite a good VA synth as well. Very good, so that's nice. It's nice and easy to assign things in the mod matrix, as you saw. Um, modular, the couple of things I would like added, please, ASM, if you're watching this. I love the mutators, you can do all sorts of things in those, even to have one note that moves around. I play violin, I know, you know, vibrato, and you can modulate the vibrato, you can do all sorts of things with those and that, including with on the poly after touch, of course, so that's really nice. But all sorts of possibilities there, and there's MPE in the 1.3 firmware. Perfect. So, things I'm less keen on, this big knob here, change the patches. I'd rather it was a filter knob, to be honest. The filter knob is nice and easy to find because it's on the end here, so it's not a big deal. But that's quite scary because if you're halfway through editing a very complex patch and you knock it or you turn it by accident, you've lost everything. There's no way of going back. So save your patches often. <laughs> that's <laughs> advice. Yeah, it's a bit too big and a bit too easy to hit. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't actually done it yet, but it still worries me a little bit. So yeah, there's no undo or compare feature when saving patches. Again, that's something I like. It's the sort of thing people add in firmware updates, so fingers crossed on that. Uh, Eurorack stuff, I don't care. People like those. To me, they're just dust traps. It's just a way of getting dust inside the machine. I might put hot glue in them. I get threatened to put hot glue in them. It really annoys Stuart, it's fun. So yeah, there are, but people like that stuff and you can assign them to on the mod matrix and stuff, if that's what you're into. The macros here, you can see all my patches. I've got all the macros are off. Uh, all, this, all these shipped patches have lots of macros on them, of course they do. I've never felt the need to use the macros as yet. I might do, but mainly I'm playing from the keyboard and they're a little awkward to get to. So I tend not to use them. I've either got, I prefer to modulate things using the aftertouch, the mod wheel or an expression pedal rather than that. They're good for when you've got um, a system patch and you want to know what to want to want to play with different things. So they're good for that and then you can tweak that to do whatever you want it to be. And then maybe save it out as what is your own. So that's for that they're quite good. It gives you all the things that are useful but they're quite fiddly to to set up because you have to name name them and you know what naming things like is like on sense it's not fun but if you like setting up a drone and then playing with things you know that's probably quite nice because you can set up a latch play with them. So yeah, they're, they're fun, but I've not really found a use for them yet, for me. Other thing I'm not keen on is by default, and this is this is a personal thing as much as anything to be fair. So you get a basic patch. I hate LFO vibratos. It feels so fake. So almost every time I start a new patch, I go into the voice menu. 
turn the vibrato off because yeah. <laughs> I just don't like it. So that's the Hydrosynth. Not comprehensive, but it shows you what I like, how I'm going to use it, what's good about it, what I'm not so keen on. Hope you found it interesting. Hopefully see you again in the video. Bye!